Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering question number five from the January 2022 Pure Mathematics P4 International A Level at Excel exam. Um, this question is about finding the area um, under a curve which is defined parametrically. So we've got to find the area R, okay, which is enclosed by the y axis and the x axis. Okay, and the place is where the curve cuts the x and the y axis. Okay, but the curve is not defined in Cartesian form. It's not given to us as y as some function of x. It's given to us as in parametric form where you have x and y both in terms of a third parameter called t. Okay, so we have to basically for part a, we have to show that if we are going to try to find this area um, you know using parametric equations that we should end up with something like this an integral like this which then in part b we have to actually integrate so basically we have to show how to find the area of this under this curve um, and show how that this is integral should we should reach um, in terms of t all in terms of t so how do we go about doing something like this? Well, what we, sh what we should know is <clears throat> that our objective when we're finding the area under a curve is to basically uh, find the integral of the function y in terms of x. That's our objective. So we want to integrate y in terms of x. That's what we want to do. But we cannot do that directly here. We have to do this in terms of t here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something to um, basically make it everything in terms of t. So what we're going to do is I'll write down y dx, but I'll put instead of dx, I'll put dx dt dt. Here you've got basically the same thing as this because you can think about the dt's cancelling out. So that will give you the same area as that. But in this case here, everything has to be in terms of t because we have to integrate all of this with respect to t. Here everything has to be in terms of x because we integrate in terms of x. So if we now we think about first the limits that we need. Okay, let's think about the limits that we need here. Alright, so we know that when t equals 0, okay, when t equals 0, that's going to be this point of x. So we want to find what this x value is and what this value of x is. This is of course 0. This is when x equals 0. And when t equals 0, we can say x is equal to the square root of 9 minus 0, which is the square root of 3. Uh, sorry, square root of 9, which is 3. So this is where x equals 3. This is where x equals 0. So we want to integrate this between the limits of 3 and 0 for x, which corresponds to when x is 3, t is 0. So it corresponds to when x is 3, t is 0. And when x is 0... As we can see, when x is 0, t is 9 over 4. We could even find that if we put, um, you know, x is um, 0 here, you'd end up with 0 equals the square root of 9 minus 4 t. So 0 equals 9 minus 4 times t. So 4 t equals 9, so t equals 4 over 9. We could even, 9 over 4, sorry. So we could even find that out from there. But we know when x is 0, t is 9 over 4, as we can see from that. So we know that this limit, when, when x is 0, t is 9 over 4. So those are the limits that we have. All right, so now the limits are in terms of t. Now we've got to have all of this inside here in terms of t as well. Now we already have y in terms of t. That's no problem. That's given to us. So I have my integral. 0 is on the top. 9 over 4 is down here. I've got t cubed. t cubed divided by the square root of 9 plus 4t. Okay, that's what we've got so far. Let me make that a bit neater. Okay, so you have t cubed over 9 plus 4 times t. That's under the square root. That's y. That's the y part. Now we're going to multiply that by dx dt. Now, we know x is equal to, we can write this in this form, 9 minus 4t to the power of a half. So dx dt is going to be, well, you multiply by the power, so you have a half 
9 minus 4 times t. Take 1 from the power to the power of minus a half, but then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is the differential of minus 4t, which is minus 4. So dx dt, when you simplify that a little bit, you have a half times minus 4, which is negative 2, times 9 minus 4t to the power of negative a half. Okay, if I write that with a positive index, it's like minus 2 over 9 minus 4t to the power of a half, which is like the square root of that. That's going to be the same as this. This is dx dt. So I can write this as minus 2 divided by the square root of 9 minus 4t. Okay, and I have to integrate all of that with respect to t. All of that has to be integrated with respect to t. Now, hopefully, this is going to give us exactly what we have here. So let's have a look. You have 0 and 9 over 4. You have minus 2. I'm going to write the minus 2 on the outside of the integral. Minus 2 on the outside. It's a constant. I've got t cubed on top. And here I have to multiply these together, which is the same as the square root of, the, you know, like if I have the square root of a times the square root of b, it's the same as the square root of a times b under one square root. So this is like the square root of 9 plus 4t times 9 minus 4t, which is like a difference of squares. So I can write this as minus 2 times the integral of t cubed over, and that will give me 9 times the square root of, 9 times 9, which is 81. The middle term will become 0. 4t times minus 4t is minus 16t squared. Now, this is 0 here, and this is 9 over 4 here. Now, what we notice, that what we have to show has um, 9 over 4 on top and 0 underneath. That's how we have to write it. So we have to write it with the limits as they ask us to, which is 9 over 4 here and 0 over here. Now, what, what's the difference between this and this? Well, this and this will be opposite signs because in this, you, if once you've finished integrating, you're going to put 0 in first, and then you're going to put 9 over 4 and subtract it from whatever you get when uh, 0 is put in. And if it's the other way around, then we have to put in first 9 over 4 and then subtract what you get when you put zero in this. So the signs will be opposite. So I can rewrite this. Instead of having minus two, I can write this as two on the outside and switch the limits. And then I've got it exactly in the form that they want us to write the final answer in. T cubed over the square root of 81 minus 16 T squared with respect to T. And that's what we had to show. We had to show this. Okay, that's exactly what we had to show. So in this case, we worked out that k is equal to 2, basically. t cubed over a, root 81 minus 16 t squared. So we can see here that we can say k is equal to 2 when it's written in that form. If the limits were the other way around, that would say minus 2 here. Okay, so that's very important for us to, from the beginning, put the limits in the right place for us to get the correct, fully correct answer here. And I thank one of the uh, viewers for pointing that out to me in the previous video that I made on this question. I didn't take care about the limits. I just th I think I just put 9 over 4 and 0 from the beginning. So in, my, in the end, the answer had a minus 2 here. Okay, where in fact it's supposed to be like this. This is how it should be. Because um, that's when x equals 3. That's when, when x equals 3, t is 0. When x equals 0, t is 9 over 4. So that's how it should be. This area should be a positive area because it's above the x-axis, basically. So that, that little, it's a small point. But it's important. So um, I forgot the name of the of the viewer. Um, let me just check. <clears throat> what was his name again? His name was Study Chan. Study Chan. So thank you for Study Chan for pointing that out. Um, now I'm going to go on to part B of this question. All right, so question five continued. It says, using the substitution u equals 81 minus 16 t squared or otherwise, find the exact value of r. Okay, normally when it says use a particular way, that's normally the easier way of doing it. So I'm going to stick with that way using the substitution u equals 81 minus 16 t squared. Now, we know that k is equal to 2. So that's now 2. We know that. So I can replace that with a 2. All right. Now, when we want to integrate something with 
um, substitution. Now, in this case, we have something um, in terms of t. So let me let me define my y as the function given t cubed over the square root of 81 minus 16 t squared. This is now separate from the y in the first question. This is what I'm calling y in part b. Okay, so I'm, I'm defining y as this function. Okay, what we're trying to integrate. So if I want to find this integral, what I want to do is I want to integrate y with respect to t. That's what we're trying to do. We're integrating y with respect to t. And we have uh, the limits 9 over 4, 0, and we have 2 out here. Now, if I'm using a substitution, a u, I'm putting in a substitution u, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate with respect to u. So I'm going to put y dt du du. That is the same as y dt. It's kind of very similar to what we just did with the parametrics, but this is with substitution. This will give us the same answer as this. But here we need to put our limits in terms of u, not in terms of t. These are in terms of t. Okay, so what I need to do is change the limits first. So I know that u is equal to 81 minus 16 t squared. So I know that when t is equal to 9 over 4, then u is equal to 81 minus 16 times 9 over 4 squared, which is 81 over 16, basically. They cancel out 81 minus 81 is 0, so u equals 0. So there's a 0 here, and I know when t is equal to 0, then u is equal to 81 minus 0, which is 81. So there's an 81 there. So I've got the limits correct now. Now I want to, um, what, what I'll first do is I'll write down my 2 here, my limits now in terms of u. I'm going to write down y as it is first, because we'll see if things cancel out. So that's t cubed over the square root of 81 minus 16 t cubed. Okay, times dt du. Now, we know that u is equal to 81 minus 16 t squared. We want to find what dt du is. From here, it's easy for, my, for me to find du dt. Just integrate this with respect to t. Um, I, I get minus 32 t to the power of 1. So therefore, we can say dt du is the reciprocal of this. It's minus 1 over 32t. So I'll write this as minus 1 over 32t. And then I've got my du. So this, I need to make sure everything's in terms of u now. Well, this t will get cancelled with that. That's going to be t squared. All right. I can take out... Um, also, I can, I can replace the 81 minus 16 t cubed, t squared, sorry, that's a t squared here, 18 t squared. I can replace that with u. So this is going to become a u here. All right. So I have 2 and I have 0 and 81. And I have t squared over the square root of u. Now, in fact, the t squared as well, I can replace the t squared because I know that u is equal to 81 minus 16 t squared. So 16 t squared is equal to 81 minus u. So t squared is equal to 81 minus u divided by 16. So I can put this as 81 minus u divided by 16. Um, and I got times minus 1 over 32 du. Now, everything is in terms of u now, the limits and everything else. So now I can just try to find out how to integrate this. Now, this 16 and this 32, okay, I can take these out. So I'll have, I'll have here 2, in fact, the minus sign as well. I'll have minus 2 over 16 times 32. I'll simplify that in a minute. That's I'm taking all the constants outside. I'm left with inside 81 minus u over, and I'll write this as u to the power of a half. Now, what I can do to integrate this is I can split this into two separate fractions. And then that will be integratable. That's 81 here and 0 there. Now, this gives me, um, that's going to give me 8. 8 times 32 is 256. So I'm left with here negative 1 over 256 times the integral between 0 and 81. Now, this is 81 over u to the power of a half. 
minus u over u to the power half integrating with respect to u almost there now we're almost ready to integrate that's 256 here that's 81 u to the power of negative a half minus now that's u to the power of one over u to the power of a half subtract the powers that's minus u to the power of positive a half all of that integrated now with respect to u between the limits of zero on the top and 81 underneath now hopefully that should give us the right answer as you say have minus one over 256 now we can actually integrate that that's going to be adding one to the power so 81 u to the power of a half divided by the power which is a half minus u to the power of 3 over 2 divided by the new power um, which is uh, 3 over 2 limits of 81 underneath and 0 on top so this is going to be minus 1 over 256 that's equal to minus 1 over 256 this is 81 times 2 which is 162 times the square root of u u to the power of a half minus this is two thirds when you divide by the fraction you multiply by its reciprocal and this is going to be the square root of u cubed all right so just really I've, i made it kind of friendly to substitute values in now that hopefully should give us an answer so you have minus one over 256 times now you have 162 times um root zero in fact that this both of these will become zero for the first part so i can just write zero so when i when i replace this uh, u with zero these would these both would become zero so that will become zero but then i have to take away so be very very careful about that take away and I put a bracket here when i put 81 in here that's 162 times the square root of 81 which is 162 times 9 minus two thirds times the square root of 81 which is 9 and 9 cubed 9 cubed is equal to 729 okay and that will give us our answer okay let me just um i'll just stick that in my calculator now so i've got um, minus one over two five six two five six be careful times and this is going to be negative be careful there's a minus out here 162 times 9 okay minus 2 thirds times 729 okay I'm going to close that bracket there that's 243 over 64 243 over 64 and it says find the exact value so i don't want to round it to a decimal and round it anything find the exact value exact area of r and that is the exact area of r and you know because we were took care about the signs properly we got a positive area which it should be as it's above the x-axis as we could see from the diagram in part a Oops. Now, as we can see from this diagram the area is above the x-axis so it should give us a positive value um, if we did everything correctly, uh, which we did. So that's the answer to question number five, part A and B, from this January 2022 Pure Mathematics P4 paper. Other questions which are related to this particular topic of integration will be found in the playlist over here. I think I'll have one about parametric equations and one about substitution. I have some different playlists, so I'll put it in both of those playlists. Um, you, can subs you can look at the um, other papers from this particular paper other questions from this paper sorry by clicking on the link that should appear in this area and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link um, thank you for watching and see you soon